Welcome to Craig's Gun Channel. In this video, we're going to cover the Excel Arms Accelerator Pistol in 5.7x28. The 5.7 round is a center fire, high velocity, bottlenecked cartridge similar in shape to the 5.56 rifle round, just scaled down in size. It was developed by FN Herstel in response to a NATO request for a replacement for the 9mm pistol. NATO specifications called for a small caliber, lightweight, high velocity round able to defeat military body armor. FN's answer to this was a cartridge that utilized a lightweight 23 grain bullet propelled at 2800 feet per second, with later versions using slightly heavier bullets of 28 to 31 grains at over 2300 feet per second. It was developed in tandem with both a fully automatic personal defense weapon, or PDW, called the P90, and later they released a pistol using the cartridge as well, the FN57. Since its introduction, civilian interest in the round resulted in non-military versions being produced, with the commercial ammunition's ballistic properties being effectively neutered. The armor-piercing rounds originally designed for the weapon is limited to military and law enforcement sales only. As far as firearms, a civilian semi-automatic version of the P90, the PS90, was released, and the 5.7 pistol is also available to civilian shooters. Both of these options have been historically expensive and sometimes hard to get. Seeing consumer demand for a more affordable option, Excel Industries brought to market a couple of options for civilian sale. Excel Industries is a diversified manufacturing company located in Ontario, California, with capabilities ranging from investment casting, tool and die making, CNC machining, and metal stamping. They produce a variety of products with applications in the computer, aviation, and automotive industry. They're also the parent company of Excel Arms, which utilizes their capabilities to produce their line of proprietary pistols and rifles. Today we're going to take a look at their Accelerator Pistol Series. The Accelerator is a large, polymer-framed, single-action, blowback-operated, semi-automatic pistol with lines reminiscent of the famous 44 Auto Mag. They have stainless steel barrels in lengths of 6.5 to 8.5 inches with an aluminum top rib and integrated weaver rail. Caliber options of 22 Magnum rimfire or 5.7 by 28 centerfire are available. There was also a version in 17 HMR which is no longer manufactured. Their 5.7 caliber option is only offered with the 8.5 inch barrel and comes in at just under 13 inches in overall length and 5.7 inches tall. It's heavy at 54 ounces, and the magazine capacity is 9 rounds. Let's take a closer look. And first we'll do a quick safety check to make sure we are free and clear of all ammunition. The accelerator pistol does have a last round bolt hole open, so with the magazine uh, inserted, we'll go ahead and just pull the slide back and lock it to the rear. So with your make sure your finger stays off the trigger. We'll go ahead and lock the slide back, and as we can see in the chamber area, it is free and clear. We'll go ahead and remove the magazine, and we can see the magazine is free and clear. So we're now good to start looking at the design and controls of the accelerator pistol. It's a polymer frame pistol. It has an aluminum top rib. Of course, it has the stainless steel barrel and slide. It does have a a uh, charging or a bolt handle that's attached to the slide. The slide does have gris uh, grasping serrations on both sides, as we can see here. Uh, however, uh, they are fairly sharp, and the recoil spring on this is, is fairly stout. So you do have the uh, capability there of kind of cheese gratering your fingertips if you're not careful. So the charging handle is a very nice addition. Uh, it is a single action trigger. It does have a very heavy trigger pull. We'll go ahead and measure this out. I've measured it several times and was getting about eight pounds. Uh, so we'll see if we uh, kind of get the same thing this time. So go ahead and well, set the scale here. Yep, just under eight pounds. So it's a fairly stiff trigger. Uh, so it's definitely not a, a target, you know, trigger out of the box in any way. Uh, the top uh, does have a rail for mounting uh, optics of various types. It does have adjustable uh, rear sight and just a fixed blade front sight. The slide release right there. Uh, the magazine does activate that. It, it has a little lever right shelf right there that engages a lever on the inside. 
so that on that last round, as the slide locks back, that would lift that up and lock the slide back. And as you can see, that can be done manually as well. It has a safety right there. Of course, this is in the fire position. You would lift up for safe, and that uh, locks the sear from being able to release the hammer. So there's the safety. So we're all set there. That's pretty much the, all the controls. The magazine release itself is a heel style release. It's located right here. So you put the magazine in. It latches onto the back of it there. So you just have to lift that back and then the magazine can come out. It doesn't really drop out. You have to do kind of pull it out. Uh, there is no magazine interlock. So the firearm would be able to fire with the magazine in or out. So as far as disassembly, the first step would be to remove this screw here and the screw right there and remove this top aluminum cover. At, there's two different size uh, Allen uh, uh, screws that are needed. Uh, it comes with them. Uh, one's a 532nd hex key and the other one's a 1 8 inch hex key. Uh, I'm just going to use uh, my normal bits that I use. So first we'll take the first one off, the front one. And that's the 5.30 seconds. And then next, we have the 1 8th. Now the rear one does have a lock washer that's, that's on it, so you want to make sure you keep track of that. Now, you want to kind of hold this down when you take those screws off. The recoil spring is housed by that top cover. And uh, on the off chance that it's, you know, could work its way loose, you just want to carefully lift this up and off. And we can see here now, there's the recoil spring. It hooks up to a steel post that's hooked to the barrel. The back part of the spring loops around a little hook that's on the slide. So the next step would be to remove that recoil spring. Uh, and it's generally easiest to just kind of grasp the spring and just push forward while lifting up to take it off that front post. And then it just comes off. And at this point, you can just lift the slide off the frame. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the frame assembly first. Of course, here's our hammer. As I said, it's an internal uh, hammer. There's our ejector right there that when the slide comes back, that would kick the shell out and uh, kick it out, you know, and uh, to eject it. And, and that's pretty much it. Now, this does have a trigger safety, so the trigger does have to be pulled for, to allow the firing pin to... Uh, to release the firing pin in it all the way to be able to allow it to shoot. Uh, we'll take a look at that when we take a look at the slide. Uh, so during normal uh, field and cleaning and operation of this, uh, you don't really need to completely disassemble it like this. This is not really considered field you know, stripping, so to speak. Uh, the manual recommends that it just be cleaned without disassembling like this, and you should only disassemble it if it gets really, really dirty or there's some other type of a problem. Uh, so normally, you'd be able to just lock the slide back and you'd have enough access uh, to be able to, to get in there to, to clean it out. And uh, so we'll go ahead and set that aside. Here we have the slide. There's the rebound spring for the firing pin. That's the firing pin right there. And the hammer would hit the back of it right here and it would go forward and then protrude out there to, to fire the cartridge. This is our extractor right here. The extractor is held in place with that Allen screw. So if you would need to do any service with uh, to that. And this section right here, that is the firing pin safety or interlock. The firing pin, if you note, 
it will not protrude all the way it just comes flush to make that protrude all the way the trigger when you operate that would lift up a section and it's right there that would pivot down which would lift up on that and when that lifts up that would lift up and when that lifts up that allows the firing pin to go all the way forward and at that point it protrudes to be able to fire the cartridge so as far as uh, the operation of it this is as far as you'd really want to take this down uh, the the various springs and stuff in there are held in place by pins uh, so for just normal cleaning uh, like I said, the manual doesn't even recommend that you take it this far down. Uh, however, in, in general practice, I, I tend to disassemble the firearm somewhat so I can get access to you know, all of the, the nooks and crannies and everything and make sure it gets cleaned out. Uh, but basically, you would just want to you know, give everything a good scrub down on here, uh, use with you know, a good quality you know, solvent cleaner, and then a light coating of oil. That coating would be for corrosion prevention and also for lubrication to allow everything to function smoothly. So reassembly is really just a, it's just the opposite of, of what we were trying to do. Uh, one note I will put on here, uh, with the slide off, do not pull the trigger. Uh, the hammer would over travel and it could damage internal components. Uh, so you'd want to, you know, just don't, don't do that. So as far as uh, reassembly, you simply lower the slide back on and as you can see, this is basically an operation that just goes back and forth like that. You put your recoil spring on, so there's a little hook. It's right there. And you would hook the spring onto that. And then kind of keeping that from flipping forward. So you don't want to just lift up, you know, like on the spring. So kind of hold that down while pulling for, pushing forward on the spring and put it over that post. And then once that's on, the next step would be to take the top cover and just put it back into place. And then make sure you have your lock washer still on there and put that screw in. Don't necessarily tighten it down yet, just kind of get it started. Just so it's in position. Then put the front screw in. And just make sure it gets started. And then once they're both started, Go ahead and snug them down. Now keep in mind this is aluminum, so you don't want to over tighten it too much. But you do want to make sure that they stay in place. And once that's tightened down, put our magazine back in. And we are all reassembled. And we're on the range today with the Excel Arms Accelerator Pistol and 5.7. Uh, we're going to be shooting some American Eagle 40 grain rounds, so we'll go ahead and take some shots and see how it does. This is a uh, awkward to hold pistol. The, the grip actually doesn't come down quite far enough, so your hand goes kind of off the bottom of it. And combined with kind of a, it's a bulky grip and it's very front heavy. It makes it very awkward to hold. The charging handle uh, is on the right side, but you know, most people being right-handed, uh, it just makes it, it's just awkward, so.
Wow, that was a catastrophic failure there. Well, catastrophic for the bullet. Had a failure to feed and it, see if you can get a look at this, it bent the bullet uh, almost completely out of the case. So we'll go ahead and keep going here. Did the same thing on that last round, did not want to feed. Hmm. And it did the same thing to the, the cartridge. Interesting. Go ahead and reload. Up a magazine and see if it keeps doing that. Go ahead and, and we're going to go ahead and take some more shots with the accelerator in 5.7. Uh, so far, the first two magazines have been a little bit disappointing. Uh, the last round in each magazine uh, had a failure to feed that actually uh, basically ripped the bullet out of the neck of the case, uh, which rendered the round, you know, it's no longer usable. So we'll go ahead and see if it happens again with uh, two more magazines. And, yep, once again, this is what we end up with, and uh, it chews it up pretty good. Okay, that time we got all eight rounds to function and, and feed and, and reliably work. Uh, the slide locked open on the last round. Um, Accuracy-wise, uh, I was expecting a little bit more from it. Now, keeping in mind I'm not a top shot marksman, um, I've shot a lot cheaper pistols with a shorter sight radius, uh, a little bit more consistently. I was expecting a little bit more with this having uh, such a long sight radius and, and you know, the long barrel. Uh, some of that actually even probably works against it though. It is very front heavy and it makes it uh, kind of difficult to actually hold up. It's a heavy gun. So we'll go ahead and load up a couple more magazines and uh, see, if, see how it continues to work. And maybe it just had to break in some to, to get past that reliability issue on that last round. So we'll go ahead and load up some more and see what it does. And once again, yeah, I, I got to show you this. If, hopefully, you can you can kind of see it. I don't know if it's coming in good or not. Uh, it just bends that bullet just completely around. So we'll go ahead and put one more magazine through. failure to hmm. have a 
kind of a failure to feed on that first round. We'll go ahead and see if it continues to feed and see what it does. <laughs> we do have a consistency issue here. It is consistently failing to strip that last round. I think it was more a fluke it fed that last round on the one magazine. Uh, this ammunition is expensive, so... I mean, I understand when you're shooting it, you're kind of just burning it up anyway, but uh, I would at least like to be able to shoot it downrange and get some enjoyment out of it, rather than just having to throw it away, so... Okay, on that last uh, magazine I fired through, uh, the accuracy seemed to actually be mostly a me thing, I'm pretty sure. So I didn't bring an actual bag with me to try shooting it off of a, you know, bench rest bagging. So I've got my field expedient bag going here. My jackets are, you know, more than just to keep you warm. So I'll go ahead and take some shots and see if uh, what I can get as far as accuracy out of it. And, once again, I suppose as long as you don't mind sacrificing around every magazine. And once again, the, a sacrifice to the ammo gods. So my makeshift bag and not having a, a decent seating position, um, but clearly uh, the, the firearm is capable of some accuracy. So most of the, uh, the inaccuracy I, I have to kind of take responsibility for myself. At the range, I ran a little over 60 rounds through it and had a total of eight failures to feed seven of which destroyed the cartridge in the process. All but one was the final round in the magazine, and ultimately, I think it's the magazine sticking a bit on that last round. To be fair, the manual recommends 200 rounds to fully break the gun in, so overall function will likely improve with use. As far as shooting, overall recoil was mild, which is not surprising given the gun's weight and the light ammunition. This was my first trip to the range with this pistol, and I noted several things I did not really care for. First, I found the pistol awkward to hold. This was in part due to the grip itself, which is oddly short for the size of the gun overall, and the pistol's front heavy barrel. It all contributed to less than ideal control of the pistol. I found the charging handle location to be odd as well. Most people are right-handed and therefore hold a pistol with their right hand, so I'm not sure why they located the handle on the right side. It is possible to rack the slide without the handle, however, it's narrow and has a very high recoil spring rate, making that difficult, and the serrations are actually a little sharp, making for a potential cheese grater experience. The magazine's capacity of 9 rounds seems low given the size of the pistol and the small size of the cartridge. The pistol being produced in California likely accounts for that. The magazines are difficult to load, but a tool is provided to assist. From an accuracy perspective, with it having such a long barrel with corresponding sight radius, well, I was expecting more. Its awkward grip, front-heavy balance, and heavy trigger pull made offhand accuracy a challenge. When I switched to a rested position on an improvised bag, the group tightened up quite a bit, so from an accuracy perspective, the gun is capable of better than I can deliver with it offhand. So what's it good for? Its size, weight, and limited magazine capacity make it a poor choice for defensive use, leaving target shooting as its usage. But its ergonomics and heavy trigger pull limit that. 
So is it just for plinking? 5.7 ammo is expensive, making it a poor choice for that as well. I do really like the looks of the pistol with its auto mag appearance, but in actual usage, it left me disappointed. Would I buy one again? Honestly, no. This is not really a gun that I can recommend. I hope that this information is of value, and if you liked the video, I would ask that you hit the like button and subscribe if you want to continue to see more like this. I value your comments and feedback, and as always, until next week, stay safe.